What's up, guys? Iggy here with Fowtech Unlimited, and today's video is a simple video. I'm going to show you how to set up a router table. I've had quite a few uh, people asking how I did it, what I use, and this and that. So, might as well do a quick video on how and what I use. This is the Cobalt Table Router. Uh, this is what I have. I got it off Amazon. It was 200 and something dollars. Uh, we'll call it 250 just to, uh, you know, just to put a number on it. But it wasn't that bad at all. Now, when you get it, you get the tabletop, obviously. It does not come with a bit, so you need to get that separately. But I'll tell you which one that is. It comes with the router. And it comes with this device, which if you look at it from behind, it actually is a strip heater or a strip outlet. And this is the on off switch with safety. You pull that and uh, it makes it so you can't turn it on whatsoever. Uh, it also comes with uh, stands, so you don't necessarily need a bench to do this. Then it's literally just mounting it to the bench if you want to do that. Or you could do a freestanding if you want. I like it mounted because it's guaranteed not to go anywhere. And with it's like twenty thousand RPM, and it will, it will hurt you. It will take fingers off. It, it, you know, if you're not right, it'll pull you in, and it'll just mess you up. So be very careful when you're doing it. Um, this is what I use, and you've seen it. But I'll go more in depth on everything. All right, these are bits by uh, I want to call it Frude F R E U D. You can see it right there, and it's part number 50501. It is the flush cutting bit, and as you can see, there is a bearing, your blade, and then a bearing, okay? This little guy right here, zoom in on that. That guy, if you notice, there is an Allen key, so that will allow you to set the height of that bearing. Regardless, you never need to touch it, but just make sure that's tight so it doesn't walk on you. Once you get your table mounted to your bench, then you're pretty much just going to see this. Now with this cover off, with the collet open and the adapter, this is literally all you need to do. You're going to take your adapter, throw it right in there, and then I believe this is a quarter inch shaft. That's going to go in and it's going to sit all the way down. Then if you look, there's this piece right here. And if you come underneath, there's a button. Push that button. When you push it, it makes it so that can't rotate. And then you're gonna take this wrench and you're gonna tighten the collet. After that collet has been tightened, take this piece and clips in place. All right, now grab a trim jig. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here. Now, if you go this right here, get my hand out of the way, that right there is a hinge. You could actually Open that lever, and that allows you to move this. See how that's going down? And then I spin it the opposite way. Where is it? There we go, and it's coming up. Obviously when it's going up, gravity fights you. So this is a little bit harder, but we're gonna get it pretty high. To the point where that collet is sticking out there we go all right and then you would lock it in place this is not what you want to do you see that see how that is above the black now if i take this right here it is going to hit right there and then it's going to dig around here you don't want that so with this sitting here we're going to unlock it and we're going to lower that below it's locked in place so now this is going to run right there and if you notice the locking plate or the ring right here is a smaller diameter than this bearing which means no matter what you do this will never hit that plate even though all these are spinning at the same speed this bearing outside bearing will not because you're rolling against it so and uh, you could also you could go down lower and you can go higher. It literally doesn't matter as long as the base right there, that collet, is not hitting 
the bottom of your trim jig. Um, same thing with the top. You could put it down and then you could trim. But with this particular setup, you're never going to use this bearing. But there is a different one you can use. And it looks like this. Here is bearing and setup. Um, I will give you a uh, description. Actually, this is what it looks like and part numbers. And so this is a larger bearing. This particular bearing is for doing uh, EDC trays. So that bearing is for the EDC trays and you could also do the bottom bearing for regular other stuff. This is a flush bit cutter, which means uh, flush is it's flush with the bearing. So wherever the bearing touches, that's where it's cutting. Same thing with this one, this is a flush. You can get longer ones, you can get shorter ones. This one, like I said, works for me. I do have to adjust it on some molds, but no big deal. And then this one, like I said, is for another setup. I don't use this one much, only when I get orders for EDC trays. But same thing, you got your locking ring, your bearing, your tool, and then the outer bearing, bearing which bolts on right there. Once you get everything all set, it's all plugged in, you are ready to rock. Now I have nothing here to cut because I literally just cut all of it and I'm not gonna do anything right now because you see it in all these other videos. So let's just do a practice run. This is a trim jig for a SIG 365XL with TLR7 sub. And I'm just gonna show you what it does. I think you get the gist of that. But there's also a couple things um, that you need to know. If you are cutting something on the router and it is, there's a lot of material past the trim jig, it's going to shake and it's going to throw it and it's going to be a pain in the butt and dangerous. If you have something that's close to the edge, it's going to shave it off and throw the pieces off and that's perfectly fine. Uh, you see it in all the videos that I do. I currently have nothing that is vac pressed right now. Everything has been cut. Everything's been sanded. Everything is all hunky dory. But so that is literally it. It's very quick. It's very easy. The link, um, it's on Amazon. You can search Cobalt uh, tabletop router, but uh, you could also, the picture that I showed, you could also get it off that. So hope this helps. That's how you set up the router. I could show you how to set up other stuff. I probably will. But I figured this was a quick video and it answers any of the questions that you have on a router table. So if you want to see or you have a question on any of the tooling, where I got it, why I got it, how to use it, yada, 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 throw a comment below. I'll be more than happy to make a video on it because if you have a question on it, there's somebody else with a question on it. And if you're like me, you like to do a lot of research before buying something, I highly recommend the Cobalt. The only thing that sucks completely is how loud it is. So if you're in an apartment complex or you have a newborn baby or anything like that, don't recommend it. Other than that, awesome, good to go. Make some money, make some good stuff. Be safe, have fun, bye.